We are back everybody. Uh, this time coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Guys, we brought my little dude down here for his birthday and now we are just hanging out for a few days. So I'm Meg VZK. Welcome back to my channel for another episode of Meg's Memo. Here we talk the latest in crypto, NFTs, and everything in Web3. Guys, hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so that you never miss a video. Um, special guest here today. Do, well, he's special, all right. Uh, we have Crypto Definitely Mason. Special. He's special. Yeah. One thing that I will say is it is super cool to get to wake up uh, with your soulmate every day and do the thing that you love. And for us, one thing that we love and both do is crypto. So uh, do we talk a lot of crypto each and every day? Especially right now with <laughs> we, everything going on. We sure do. Yeah. Um, and it's awesome. We, we like a lot of the same projects, but there's also projects like that we don't always see eye to eye on and agree on. But then again, I think we positioned ourselves in a diversified way that could very well and most likely will uh, pay off in a big way but you never know some of these pr crypto projects you guys they will go to zero some of them still will go to zero uh, what's a project for instance that we don't necessarily agree on um, Cardano, Cardano. Like, um, I'm still not fully convinced not fully convinced I'm convinced that Charles is a great person well I don't know about his character but He's a great asset for crypto as a whole, and he's doing great things for crypto. And see, I really do love Cardano. Um, you know, it is a project that I really do believe in long term, and that's something that until that changes in my mind, I will stand by that. Uh, one thing I think a lot of people forget in the crypto space is that these things take time, they take development, they take working out bugs. Uh, things do not happen overnight, but a lot of people come to crypto to get rich quick and that's mm. the mindset that they have now personally i think that is the wrong mindset i can't tell you guys how many messages like i get i can't imagine how many you get about hey man how can i double my money tomorrow tomorrow quick fast with the lowest risk um and i actually had this the other day somebody asked me this in my instagram dms and it's frustrating because i'm never going to tell you what to do i can't tell you what to do and i don't want to tell you what to do um if somebody comes to me with that question that is the wrong mindset to have in my opinion if you're asking that question you probably one have a gambler's mindset two are not in a good financial position mm -hmm. and I think that you need to be doing your research. This person came back to me and said, I understand the fundamentals because I had told them, you know, start really understanding crypto. Came back with, to me with, I understand the fundamentals. I get this. I understand it. Okay, so then what are you learning? How are, are you learning to double your money in crypto? Um, one thing you should know then is that doubling it fast with low risk is not there. <laughs> it's not there. Um, yeah, and speaking of getting rich quick, a lot of founders of these crypto projects get rich quick and then stop building. And they go and buy a mansion, they go and buy all the stuff with the money they just made and they stop building. And that's when you see a project slowly fade to zero while the founder just basically, they call it a soft rug. When you soft rug a project, you go and take the money and you start living a lavish lifestyle but you let your project fade to black. Now, before we get into much of today's video, you guys, let's quickly talk about the market. Um, we have Bitcoin sitting at $26,170. Mm -hmm. um, are we gonna go lower? I do believe most likely. Um, you know, a few decent prices out there still. Um, you know, you have to really look at your strategy for crypto. For me, I do have long-term and short-term plays. So for myself, I have been focusing a lot on trading. Um, and when I started trading, there was times where I lost a lot more than I made. And every now and again, that still does happen. But I do have long-term dollar cost average holds as well. So what is dollar cost averaging? For some of you that are new here, dollar cost averaging is where you take a specific amount of money whatever that is, each week, bi-weekly, once a month, whatever works for you and your situation, not financial advice, guys, um, and you put it in regardless of what the price is doing. You're not focused on the highs, the lows, but you know, the longer that you are in crypto, you do, believe it or not, not focus on you know, just putting it in whatever it's doing. You do look for those red days. 
For me right now, I'm looking at adding more quant. Quant sitting at $88 today. Um, I'm looking at adding more chain link. Chain link is under $7 still. Chain link's an oracle. We need oracles in crypto. Um, that helps with the data that we use in the real world, getting that to the chain. And we need those. And I think that that is a sleeper in my opinion. Um, you know, I'm looking at some smaller cap crypto projects, which means they are usually higher risk. Um, Trias is one um, that I am looking at possibly picking up soon. I believe it's around $2.50 right now. Um, again, high, high risk uh, money that I can afford to lose when it comes to Trias. So, you know, those are a few, but everything else, those prices are, it is what it is. You know, you have to decide what you're comfortable with and decide what you think that those are each going to go to in the bull run. A lot of those might not even hit all time highs or a lot of projects, I should say, um, might not. What are you looking at picking up? Mm -hmm. And what are you thinking of the market? Uh, I think we're close. We're getting closer to the bull run. We're probably three to six months out. I hope it's six months. Like, I hope there's still a lot of time t for people to prepare. Um, because if I tell you the bull market's coming tomorrow, are you ready? No. And you get massive anxiety, don't you? When I say, what if it happened tomorrow and we got a 40% Bitcoin pump? Who would be ready and who would be not ready? And just it, feel that energy if you're not ready. Is that something where you guys are going to FOMO when that happens? Most likely. Um, are you aware of FOMO? Why are a lot of people waiting and not DCAing? You know, your financial situation is your financial situation. It's, the world is in a really, really bad place right now. And a lot of people are struggling financially. So I understand that. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there. And... It's just psychologically very interesting how people wait for the bull run to come, for everybody to be talking about crypto, not the lawsuits that are going on and people fighting in the space, but the crypto, you know, TikToks coming back, the YouTube videos, everybody on the street, um, in the grocery store lineup talking about crypto um, to start buying crypto. People wait for that. And I just, you know, you have to be aware of those emotions in crypto because chances are you might, you know, FOMO. But what are you looking at still? What are you wanting to add to your bags? Let's let's hear a couple of them here real quick. Um, recently, I've kind of said I've stopped buying HBAR. I'm not buying XRP. I'm not buying a lot of the long-term coins. Just feeling just, like your money's better in other projects I'm just, at this time. I'm just done with, my, with stacking long-term bags. They're done, and Amazing. I'm not buying them anymore. The thing is, there's exceptions. There's quant, which I think, like, just the scarcity plus what we know about quant and what it's doing equals a no-brainer. And then there's Algorand, which has never, ever been at the price it's been. Even the ICO. I'm talking about, like, the seed investors in Algorand didn't even get the token for $0.08. Cents. Now, what does that say about the project, though? Right, you are swimming against a huge current with Algorand and all of those utility coins. And that just makes me want to put my money in, leave it, and any new cash flow that's coming through, I'm using it for trading or looking at like newer projects. And there's a, been a couple that I'm exploring more. Um, and just use that money for projects that are going to explode in the bull market. Any, any of those you want to share? <clears throat> XYO. Uh, Spool, NXRA, Alliance Block. Uh, what else? QANX. These are on my list too, you guys. Those like, are awesome. Kind of like the the utility coins that haven't got their buzz, their proper buzz yes. yet. And then there's like Energy Web Token. There's some of the OG ones like Electronium. Uh, Personally, I'm Velo. not in um, any of those, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, these are the ones that are those like three. newer, and they they kind of. Energy Web Token? Energy Web Token is not Velo? new. Yeah. They've been around. Velo is built on Stellar, which I really like. I think there's room for like a Stellar based project yeah. to blow up. And AI projects as well. ChatGPT, yeah. Sophia Verse, um, Sophia Dex Verse. Check. There's going to be lots of those. We've got Gala with the founders fighting back and forth and suing each other. Yeah. And this, yeah, you want to speak on that a little bit? 
So it seems that there's a lot of that going on right now, um, bear market activities, um, and there's a lot for us as you know people in the crypto space to focus on and to look at right now because everything else is pretty quiet. So when a lawsuit comes up or you know founders are suing each other, we do look that way. Uh, with Gala, I love personally that Gala is not just Gala Games. So there's a lot of gamers in this space and uh, Gala Games was the first of many. However, they are building their whole ecosystem. They've got Gala Film, they've got Gala Music, and in my mind, they are one of the leaders in all of those sectors of Web3. They are bridging the world today as we know it in music, in film, in gaming, and they are bridging it to create it in Web3 and to bring those people over. Does that happen overnight? No. Are issues gonna happen along the way? Yes. You know, founders don't always make it together and stuff does happen. And in Web3, stuff seems to be a lot more public than it is in Web2 and what a lot of us are used to in the real world because a lot of that stuff happens in the real world just behind the scenes. So does that mean that I am personally selling my gala? No. Do I have a moon bag of gala? Yes, what is a moon bag? It's where you put in your money. Thank you, Crypto Wendy, for this, by the way. This is who I learned about a moon bag from. It's where you put your money in. Once it goes up, you take out your original money that you put in, and then you let the rest ride. I do have a moon bag of gala, and I will forever let that ride until I feel it is necessary to take it out. We are not in the bull run yet. I personally still believe that gala could do well. Could it go to zero? Sure, absolutely. As I stated, any of these projects could go to zero. Um, how about you? How are you feeling about Gala? I think that time shows, time tells all. Like, <clears throat> time will show the true intentions. So somebody at Gala, their true intentions when they started the project were not there. They mm -hmm. weren't matched. Like, they weren't, it wasn't a pure intention. And now that has came out in this whole war that's going on and I really don't know the specifics. Yeah, and I'm gonna I, be honest with this as well, um, other than, you know, the original kind of lawsuit that came out and, you know, Gala's name got tossed into it, even though it was nothing to do with Gala specifically, it was to do with the founders um, and them suing each other, but the fine lines and the details, I'm not consistently following that story because I really don't care. Um, yeah, unless, whoever if it's about ownership or something mm -hmm. wherever the project goes to and whoever's in charge of it if they start making stupid moves or wrong moves i'll be selling even my moon bag yeah. because that capital's better used somewhere else absolutely if they start making wrong moves but for me i have the same perspective as you on gala where i like that they're bigger than just gaming they're hitting like the main three music film and games and we went to their event out in Malta. It was a great mm -hmm. event. You can tell there's like a lot of money being spent like into their events where it should be being spent, not on mansions and cars. It should be spent making events at least if you want to throw a party, right? Throw it for your community, not your private mansion in wherever, you know? So I, the only reason I would ever sell Gala is, is if, um, do you hear that over there? Uh, the only reason I would sell Gala is if the founders started making horrible, wrong moves. I don't care that they're suing each mm. other. Sue each other for whatever, right? It's just all jealousy and greed, that part of it. And you know, if you start a crypto project, you're, you're, you have to be able to resist the greed. And those are the real ones that will last. Time will tell all. Like in five years, what needs to crumble of crypto projects the crypto projects that need to crumble will crumble. And the ones that stay, they had true intentions from the start and they'll stay. So I'm not selling Gala until I see them start making horrible decisions. If they make good decisions, I'll keep mm -hmm. supporting and buying. And you know, I personally, like full honesty here, full transparency, I haven't been happy with everything I've seen online. But again, you you see one person's word and then you see another person's word and i'm talking about how they've treated some of the other influencers like that are involved in gala um and you know i haven't e exactly been happy with what i've seen but i don't know all sides of the story either um and i'm a mature enough human being to 
you know, take a step back and, um, like, you know, you observe and, uh, see how you feel about it, but not knowing all sides, not knowing what actually happened. I don't know, you know, really how I feel about all of that at this point, but, um, anyway, next up, as you guys know, stoner cats, uh, Mila Kunez's um, NFT project that is being sued by the SEC. We talked about a little, we talked about that a little bit ago on this channel. Um, and you know, how does that look with NFTs moving forward? Because this is the second time now, um, the first time the SEC had sued a media company that had promised to be the next Disney. Um, but this is, you know, the reality of where this is going with NFTs, I feel right now, um, because we haven't dealt with much of this in the NFT space. Yeah, a lot of people are thinking that if you launched an NFT and it had a roadmap, you're going to be attacked by the SEC. The thing is, there's way too many projects for them to attack everybody, so they go at the ones that are attached to famous people like Ashton Kutcher to make a statement and all of that. Yes, they make to prove an example. a statement. And I think that this is something that people really need to be cautious of moving forward with NFTs until there are more guidelines. But what's happening with these NFT projects that are launching is they are making promises. They are making yeah. promises to their communities that these NFTs are going to, you know, whether it go up in value or they're going to moon, they are put in that securities bag, bundle, basket. <laughs> so honestly the best tip if you're going to launch an nft make it free because if it's free you're never going to be called a security and that's why bored apes and crypto punks were launched for free and that's bitcoin and ethereum right bitcoin is bored apes crypto punks is ethereum it's the same thing bitcoin was launched with no promise whatsoever it was launched by who knows like we don't know who it was launched by and you could just it was just peer-to-peer -peer buying and selling so if you're gonna make an nft make it free until there's regulations in place then you can whatever they tell you we can do we can do and this is not financial advice you guys always um, consult with professionals on this stuff if this is something of your concern um, neither mason or myself are financial advisors um, and every jurisdiction their rules their guidelines um, it's different in every country so know your rules i know the sec has jack shite for rules and you know a lot of this stuff right now and they really are delaying uh, regulations around crypto nfts all of this kind of stuff so know the rules wherever your jurisdiction is if you're responsible enough to be in crypto then you're responsible enough to figure that out but that is everything you guys just a short video today i mean maybe not that short but uh just wanted to chat a little bit you guys are going to get these every day every you day. heard it you heard it every day for the next little bit here while we are out here um we're in the same boat as you guys folks we hold crypto you hold crypto the market goes down we lose money, you lose money. It's the same thing. So we're in the same boat and we feel the market waves with you guys, but- it Won't be like this forever. It'll yeah, get better. Exactly. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on that notification bell so that you never miss a video and we will see you next time. And goodbye. <laughs> Stole that.